Well, let's jump right into it. We're going to talk about the defending champion Georgia Bulldogs and their preseason predictions. Let's let's talk a little bit about where Georgia is right now. Kirby Smart is returning for his eighth year, a record of 81 and 15. That's pretty hard to beat. Yeah. A 2022 record, team record of 15 and 0, 8 and 0 in the SEC. That's the third SEC team since the LSU in 2019 to run the tables. Uh, pretty impressive in such a, a, a tough conference. Absolutely. Uh, their offense in 2022 was ranked fifth in the country, uh, over 500 yards passing a game. They were number one in the red zone. But their offensive coordinator, Todd Monken, left and is now with the Baltimore Ravens. So they brought back a familiar face, Mike Bobo, who previously was at Georgia from 20. 20- 20 to 2022. Is this a change, Darren, that's going to disrupt the momentum at Georgia? Well, you know, I think there's very much obviously a potential and when you have that large of a change when there was such an incredible system in place. But I, I also think you have to keep in mind that Kirby Smart very much is from that uh, um, that that school of thought the same as, as – uh, uh, our old buddy Nick has it at Alabama where you can come in, you can do your things, but uh, they're still going to work within my system. And, and there's, you know, language is going to stay the same and stuff. So I would think probably some of that has gone on. But in addition to that, uh, the fan reaction, obviously everyone's reaction has been a little mixed uh, to Mike Bobo, but his resume at Georgia does include the high scoring offense in school history back in 2014, the most yards per game of any uh, offense in Georgia history in 2012. Uh, so, so his offenses ha- have done well <laughs> at Georgia. It, it's still, I, I can understand as a Georgia fan, have a little bit of uncertainty, but I do feel like there's also some, some, the possibility that, okay, we, we at least got to give this a shot because he's not coming in and having to coach a bunch of guys up. I mean, he's coming in and putting talented guys in the right place which his history would seem to indicate he can do pretty well. So I don't know that that's the enormous concern that people are trying to make it out to be, but I do still see where it could be. A, it definitely is a concern. And another concern is who will play quarterback. Stetson Bennett is gone. Yep. And there's a appears to be a three-man race, but it looks like Carson Beck is going to get the nod yep. to be the starting quarterback for Georgia. Anytime you bring in a new quarterback, especially replacing somebody – who accomplished what Stetson Bennett did, there's always some trepidation. Do Georgia fans have a cause to be sitting a little bit on the edge of their seat, biting their fingernails? How do you think this is going to go? I think there's some obvious reason for some discomfort just in simply the fact that those are two major changes at, at the same time, to lose your coordinator and your quarterback. But also, most likely, like you said, Carson Beck is the leader in the clubhouse. looks like it's going to be him. And when he's going to be throwing the ball, uh, to one of the most talented receiver rooms in the entire country and Brock Powers, uh, as long as he can get it there, they, I think they're going to be all right. <laughs> you know, you just got to get it in their hands. I mean, Brock Bowers it, it is truly a, a legendary, a, a, you know, a generational talent at tight end. You've got one of the nation's top O lines that's going to be protecting the quarterback. Could there be some fall off? Well, Of course, when you have those kind of changes all that happen at the same time. But even if he's having a bad day and he's not on where he needs to be with the receivers, you know, Brock Bowers only drops like one in every 30 passes. (laughs) So so that's pretty that's that's a pretty good number to have. So if you can just get it to him, I think you'll be okay. A little concerning uh, that like I said, with those changes where they are, but at the same time, there's just so much there, um, talent there that that, that they can kind of form around him and let him grow into the game. I think. They always have a a stable of strong running backs at Georgia. This this year is no different with the Edwards kid and the Milton kid. Absolutely. Uh, Lad McConkey is coming back at wide receiver and they've got a couple of transfers and, and Dominic Levitt from Missouri and, Ra Ra Thomas from Mississippi Rah, State yep. has come over. So I think the offense is going to be be yeah. just fine. Yeah. On the defensive side, you've got a defensive mastermind in Will Muschamp, who who coaches the defense along with Glenn Schumann. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've got 
as usual, some stud linebackers, uh, Shmel Mondin and Jamon Dumas Johnson and Chaz Chambliss are a couple of those. Uh, the secondary, I think, is going to be fine. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, we're, we're, we're looking at another loaded Georgia team yep. that has the potential to make it back to the national championship game. Yeah, and defensively, you know, anytime, even though there are some some places where you've got to plug uh, some some new people in, when your number one and number two uh, tacklers from the previous year are back and are back with experience, uh, which you know you you mentioned both Munden and Dumas Johnson. I mean, that was number one and number two, a total of 146 tackers, tackles between the two of them. When you've got that kind of production coming back, and it looks like that your your secondary is going to be okay you're going to be strong. And again, when you bring that strength of defense to, uh, to the table, that can cover some, some miscues that might happen on the offensive side of the ball. Definitely. Well, let's look at their schedule and their path to a national championship. Uh, really the, to look at a, a game that would carry any kind of weight, you've got to go to September 16th, South Carolina. Absolutely. Don't know what to expect there. We'll get into no. a South Carolina preview later. But they go to Auburn September 30th. Hugh Freeze will be looking for those signature wins. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get much bigger than beating Georgia right now. Yeah, uh, They've got Kentucky at home. Then they go to Vanderbilt, Florida at home, Missouri at home, Ole Miss at home. And then they end uh, November 18th. They go to Tennessee where they have a six-game winning streak over the Vols. And I'm pretty sure Josh Heupel is going to remind his team about that. Probably and, already is. Yeah. And then they wind up with in-state rival Georgia Tech. So when you look at this schedule, there is a real possibility Georgia runs the table. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is the setup for a 12 and 0. When you look at who they play out of the West, uh, you know, there is not an LSU. There is not an Alabama. I mean, there what it's a C Auburn. Auburn and Ole Miss, is that their two out of the West? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, Ole Miss has the potential to be a tough game, and it, but it's at home. Uh, I would, if I were a Georgia fan, I would be a little bit more concerned about that in uh, Oxford. But I think at home, uh, that's just not that much, a, 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 as much of a concern as it would be on the road. Like I said, I, I think at the end of the day, uh, this is set up to be a 12 and 0. Uh, I, I think you can very easily see that. Very favorable schedule for the Bulldogs. Yep.